Welcome to Sunday Sermon. It is Tammy coming to you live from my office, uh, not the women's retreat. Uh, and I'll show y'all what I'm looking at out this door here. It is pouring down rain. Uh, that weather hit early today. They saw it coming in on the radar. So we packed up camp and we headed home. Uh, I had to um, decompress a little bit, <laughs> literally decompress <laughs> and to go to the bathroom and get my bearings so that I can come live and then get the internet set up. So I'm a little bit late coming live, but we're here nonetheless. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hello. Tell me where you're watching from today as always. Um, if you are able to, if you are able to, and you are in the, uh, the farm, the women's retreat, um, the women's retreat page, if you could please do me a favor and share this video over there. I'm going to try to do that myself because I'm live in a couple of places today. I'm live on my timeline. I'm live on the business page and I'm live in the private VIP group. So um, I'm going to, this is edible. I'm not going to be able to go, I'm not going to be able to share it from the private group, but I can share it from the other places. So I'm going to try to do that right now and share that from some other places to get that to where it needs to be this morning. And then we're going to get this party started. I should be live in my personal page. Where am I at? Oh, let's see. I'm supposed to be live in all of those places. In all of those places. I'm not sure why I'm not live. So I'm live. Oh, I'm not live on my personal timeline. I'm live on our page, our our home, home telephone page. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Let's go there. Let's continue. Let's uh, no, 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 that's what I want to, I want to do this. Okay, now I'm going to share this out. Share this out. Uh, I want to copy the link to that. And I'm going to put that over in the place where it needs to go. Thank you all so much for jumping on here and sharing that out for me today. Um, I, uh, I've had a really amazing weekend. Um, and not in the way that I anticipated, which is what I want to talk about today, right? It's, which is not in the way that I anticipated, but very much the way that it needed to be. Um, sh post sharing feed. Oh, this is not what I wanted. What is going on? Hang on, keep editing. Paste. All right, so I just shared the link to the, the Sunday Sermon Live in the group here, I'm trying to make sure that's working. Trying to make sure that that is working as all, y'all. Because I was not able to go live from the event, but I promised them I would put the live into the event. So if somebody can help get that over there, I'd appreciate it. Um, again, um, just trying to, to do what I said I would do. Uh, I met a lot of amazing women this weekend. Um, I also did not, like I said, um, this weekend was uh, amazing and it was um great but in a very different way in which i um assumed right we talk about not assuming and it was definitely in the way in which i did not assume um so uh we got in on friday afternoon hi hello hello miss nancy we have missed nancy Boyer for such we've missed her for so long hi nancy we're so glad that you're here joining us today we have missed you and we're glad that you're here. Um, I, uh, I'm looking at it and I said, this is just now. I'm trying to get this shared out. Let's do a share. Send in messenger. Hold on, send in messenger. Ah, oh, ha ha, I found it, y'all. Give me a second. Um, I want to share, share in a group. Okay, I think I may have, I, may, I think I may be finding it. This is a, share into an event maybe um hello 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 share yeah i can't do it from this it's okay i'll figure it out hello 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 appreciate y'all for jumping on here 
Um, and I'm sorry that I'm uh, I'm just trying to do some some figuring and I, and I can't do it, but I'm not going to stress over it. I can always share it out later. That's what I'll do. Um, so like I said, I met a lot of people who checked in on Friday evening. I got set up in the camper, things like that. Um, so I did a little roughing it, right? We had running water in the camper. I had uh, for sure had electricity and a little air. So that was nice, but I did not have a bathroom. So I did have to use like a porta john And I was telling Red when I got home, I'm like, if you don't believe in mind over matter, um, <laughs> trust me, my mind mattered when it came to going to the bathroom. <laughs> I am not a roughing it kind of gal, right? I know that about myself. Um, I also went with this weekend with the intentionality, right? Of um, learning how to set some boundaries out of clarity versus out of being triggered. Right. Being able to say, like, here are some things that I need to, like, have constantly. Like, these are some things that I need to, like, set boundaries with my time, my energy, um, you know, um, things that maybe bother me, but don't. They bother me in large quantities, but in small quantities are okay. Learning to to um, to kind of let it go and stay in flow. Right. And. Uh, I really thought that I was going to go in this weekend and there was going to be like gurus there and there was going to be like all these classes and people there who were going to give a speech or do a program that was just going to like um, be my aha moment, right? Be my aha moment. Um, however, this was definitely more of a self-discovery experience. It was more of a, um, every person's going to find their own thing out. Like there was, there was not, it was, it was more of a self-guided kind of weekend. Um, and it was great. I, you know, there was lots of, lots and lots of, um, activities. Uh, unfortunately, as, uh, I don't know if y'all saw or not, um, yesterday morning. So Friday evening, we kind of got in, um, kind of got set up for, got set up for camp. Um, the glass blower did not show up. The yoga instructor got a uh, car broke down and the massage therapist. So like I was really looking forward to yoga, like good yoga, right? I was really looking forward to massage. I was going to get, I told Red, I was like, there's just a massage and stuff over there. And I am 100% uh, interested in getting paying for getting a massage because I needed to get the shoulder worked out. Um, but, uh, expectations always throw us off, right? Expectations always throw us off. And that was something that I was trying to, um, to hold very true to, to the weekend, right? Well, something I was trying to hold very true to the weekend was, um, something that Carly told me before I left, we were talking about this retreat. I was like, I'm really excited about this. I was like, but I don't want to get inside my own head about it. And she's like, what I got, what message she got and came in to tell me was, um, she said, let it be what it's going to be. She's like, don't have any expectations. Don't get caught up in your head. Uh, let it be exactly what it's supposed to be. And I was like, you know what? You're exactly right. And the type A personality in me, the type A personality in me, um, when I got there, you know, and I was also one, I, and I, if you're watching this, you're one of the other reasons why I want to be a part of this is I really wanted to, um, see how this worked, right? Understand how it was set up. I've never been to the farm before. I was, you know, we're interested in having an Airbnb that has a similar principle. Wanted to see how their, um, program worked. Um, I love when people kind of embrace their truth. I love when people kind of um, do things their own way and it gives you perspective, right? I worry about the details. I get I, the devil. I say the devil is in the details, right? Um, that's why whenever um, you get your packages um, for me, um, I believe that eating that food, that, um, I want to be, I want to be a whole experience, right? I want you to start getting excited about your edibles from the time you order them. I want you to see them and to be excited and that for, for that to invoke magic inside of you when you're just looking through the website. I want that to be an eye catching thing, right? Um, all the way through to where you uh, receive your package with the stickers and the, the little wrappings and all the things on it. Um, the devil's in the details to me. But 
I have been preaching and talking and telling everyone, right, forever about progress over perfection and about how done is better than perfect and how uh, when you have a dream, your dream might not be the exact way that you imagine it day one. Um, it may not be, you know, when I first started this this process of discovering what my soul's purpose was, um, you know, it was Ziploc bags and wax paper. It was caramels and aluminum foil. It was um, nothing. It was cutting it out of a sheet pan and, and everything being close to the same, but not really. Um, and it's a progress, not perfection. And watching another business owner, right, kind of start like, She's like, we're adding here and we're adding there. And like they just, they were doing a third yurt this weekend and was dedicated to her mom. And I went down to the first yurt village and then came up and saw that last yurt. And I'm like, I see her vision, right? And like, you know, it's like, we're going to do this next time. We're, we're working on our dreams. Hey, Mel, um, we are working on our dreams. And it was interesting to see that, right? And to step out of a place of when you're looking at it. I learned in my 12 steps that expectations are premeditated resentments. Exactly, right? And that's what I thought about, right? I'm like, am I just like, when you start judging, are you like, well, I would do it that way. You're judging it because I'm not, you're not doing it at all. Like she's doing it. They're doing it. Exactly, Elizabeth. I love that. Um, expectations are premeditated resentments, right? Things to be mad about. Things to be mad about. And I let go of all that this weekend. And I, and I can honestly say I did let go of that. Now, um, I love when women come together to help one another and to heal. And Friday evening when people were getting there, everybody was kind of getting their feet under them, right? Uh, as you, If you're watching this and you were there, you know, that's kind of the feel of your unpacking camp. You're trying to figure who your neighbors are, trying to find where your people are, where your tribe are. There were people from all different backgrounds, all different ages, sizes, everything you can imagine. Uh, and it was a nice melting pot of people. There were a lot of ladies that attended who were from North Carolina, some ladies from Virginia Beach. There was a whole group of can of moms that are called the wildflowers that were amazingly wonderful women um and a lot of them have been to the farm before but friday evening was a lot of that right a lot of kind of finding your bearings getting camp set up kind of slushing off the the, the travels things like that um now now there was also um they had a good time they had a really good time they had a really good time and uh saturday morning we came into saturday morning with um yoga and that's when my shoulder went out and I was frustrated whenever I went to do the first yoga pose. We were, we were going to tabletop pose and our tabletop pose where you kind of get up and you're just on your hands and knees. And my shoulder sounded like pop, pop, pop. Like I could feel it popping. Like it was like, it was terrible. And then it felt like the rest of the day I had some like, I, the rest of the, I, had, I had a lot of like nerve pain in my back and my neck. I couldn't turn my head. I had no range of motion, but um, I wanted to unplug, right? I wanted to um, sit and be in nature. I wanted to meditate and ask questions and get answers. And um, I think that the universe was like, you're going to try to be all things to everyone. So we're going to set you at your camper because you need to sit there. And because I'm going to tell y'all, I have never gotten so many messages that I wrote journal messages down. I saw animals. I really was able to connect. And it's been a long time since I have felt like I had that kind of connection. And when I tell y'all, when I tell y'all that um, some of the messages that came through, um, I was freaking out about saying. And one of the things, um, let me find it. I, I, I wanted to share this before I brought, we only brought these bags in. I brought in a few bags. Um, you know, it's it's my um it's my shoulder. I, I've got to go to the doctor and get it looked at. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's a physical injury to my shoulder, but the flaring of it was definitely probably a way to say, hey, uh, there, we have something different for you today. Um, 
I was in, I am in a different place. Um, um, so when I tell you that I got messages for people, I got messages for people and I didn't know they were for people. And I was really feeling kind of awkward and strange and, 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 um, and if you're someone from the retreat who's watching this, uh, who got one of those messages, um, they were powerful. They were powerful messages. They were almost spooky. And it was the first time in a while that I have felt like um, um, that I'm not operating from, uh, I'm not putting any of my own ego into anything. Uh, I have not done card readings for individuals lately. I have not um, offered any Reiki to anyone else recently. Um, I have not um, felt as connected to source as I had been. I have been tr having trouble quieting my mind. I uh, found myself when I was in meditation. Um, going into uh, overdrive on ideas and things and being very almost manic lately, right? And, I, and I've said that, right? And so this weekend uh, with the yoga thing happening with me now, and I wanted, what I wanted to do was to get to know these women and to um, connect with them um, and, and talk about the power of one, right? Talk about the power of one. And how um, if as mothers, right, because I was watching, I, I, was listen, I was listening a lot more than I was talking in most group settings. I wasn't talking a lot in group settings. Um, I was listening and I was hearing conversations. And so one of the things that um, I found myself doing Friday evening, I found myself stepping into a place of judgment a little bit. And um wanting to fix it right wanting to fix it hearing the conversations between mom a and mom b or lady a and lady c or lady d and lady e uh, about things like the stinking thinking right uh the feeling like they're not enough the mom guilt the conversations about the things that they're not feeling like they're doing right um the things that you know i know i'm supposed to but i don't and um about how they don't feel like they're enough and they don't know where they fit and they're trying to figure out their thing. And, you know, um, they're overwhelmed with work and all of the, uh, all of the things that they're asked to do and they can't, they don't, they, you know, all of the, all of the things that if, a, if you are a Volvo owner or a woman, right. Um, you have had those conversations with your girlfriends and with other women in these similar settings, right. Uh, the stresses of motherhood, the stresses of caregiving. A lot of them were caregivers uh, as well for elderly and older family members. Uh, there are people there who were um, who just needed to take a breath, right? Who just needed to do what Sheila said right here, which was slow down and breathe, right? They had never been to anything um, like this before. Um, they didn't know what to expect. Um, some people were just there for the, the cannabis, right? So, but Friday night when we're doing all those things, um, I heard those conversations and then I, and I observed and I observed and, uh, and I spoke about this at my 420, um, on my three o'clock blazing gaze meditation yesterday, because I did a meditation workshop. And what I did yesterday when I got set down at the camper was, uh, I got to take all of the things that I heard and saw. And I asked um, the universe, right, to um, to take my take all of the feelings that I were that I was having that did not come from a place of um, good intent. And here's the thing: we can all, no matter how love and light, no matter how um, hometown hippie ish we are, no matter how grateful fed we are, right, no matter where we get. We can still have these preconceived notions and these judgments and these, I can do it better. And this is how I would do it. And I'm older, so I know. And um, I know that that is off-putting. 
And I knew that at that moment on Friday night, I knew that during the day Saturday, I, 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 and Source knew it, but God knew it better than I did, right? God knew it better than I did, apparently, um, that I would not have been able to communicate and interact with those ladies and not sound like um, a passive aggressive know-it-all. And that's and I and I can say that two things can be true. I can deliver these messages and every and they touch you and they hit you the right way. The other thing is, is that sometimes I'm not the best communicator when it comes to in-person communication. Um, I can be very overbearing. I can take over the conversation and I can be a know-it-all. And um, I am working. And that was something that I was very much trying not to do. Right. I was trying very much not to like say, well, let me let me get involved and make it better for you, because that's just my ego. That's my ego and personality body thinking that I can do it. And what what I heard yesterday in, in those moments, right, in those moments was stop. And I was like, I say this, right? I can love you, but not want you to eat at our table, at my table, right? And, the, uh, but, I, you know, I can love you, but, you know, we just can't eat at the same table. I want you to eat, but just not with me. And what I found out was, is that I was like, I don't want my energy to be affected. At the same time, I don't want my energy to then affect others. My arm hurt, right? I was going to move slow. And these women were mothers. What were they going to want to do if I was on these hikes, right? They are wanting, they're going to want to like, well, do you need anything? I'm like, you're not here to take care of me. And because I knew that my energy was not going, and these women had, le they were having the best time. And I am so happy they went swimming and they puffed in paint and they had their cannabis and they had mushroom walks and sound bowls and yoga. And I can't remember what else was going on yesterday, but there's lots and lots and lots of things, right? Um, it's amazing when you can get that clarity. I was like that too, but now I catch myself when I close my mouth and here's what I say, right? Um, I say, God gives us two ears and one mouth. We should listen twice as much as we speak. And one of the things that, um, I uh, said during, you know, I've been back to basics was, is that I put my earrings on, it's my earrings, right? And I put my stuff on and I say, okay, um, I'm putting these earrings on. Uh, I'm going to put these on. These are my protection. Uh, and they're going to make me a clear and perfect channel. Allow me to deliver the message in the way that is will be heard. Uh, and then it's, and it's to my highest and best and to the person who is listening and hearing these highest and best. Also give me the knowledge to know that the things that do not serve me are the things that I don't need to hear. There are things that people say that I don't need to hear. They are not for my ears. They are none of my business, right? Um, and there are things um, that I should not hear and there are things that I should not say. So also give me the guidance and the protection. Hi, hummingbird. Hi. To, um, not have to not not seek out to hear the things that do not serve me and do not speak the things that do not serve myself or others. And so I was sat down yesterday and that's OK. I had so much time. I pulled a crystal. I set my crystal grid up on my on my area. I took myself into some silent meditation using some great Reiki music. Right. I did some Reiki on myself, which I needed to do. I, I went through and I gave myself a really nice Reiki session, which felt amazing. Um, and then I uh, pulled cards for the, for the meditation. And I want to be the first to say, um, yesterday during our blazing gaze meditation workshop, I, um, I've never done a guided meditation, a full guided meditation in my voice before. And my, I say in my voice versus me doing me, me coming up with it. Um, I, um, I want to show y'all. I want to share with y'all a couple of things today. Um, I, um, I outlined it, right? I had an outline. I pulled the cards and I took some journal time. And, um, I, you know, I just said, I just said, we're going to do, I said, this is, this is the meditation that I wrote down. Deep breath in, exhale. I wanted to pull the white light in through that. Um, I just basically did the grounding meditation, right? Where we pull in the, the white light into the crown and push it all the way through all the chakras to fill up that energy, pushing it down through the earth 
10,000 feet deep, 10,000 feet wide, all the way through the magma, connecting back and creating that energy bubble, that circle of energy to protect you. And then I don't know, I channeled in some affirmations. I channeled in some other things when they were doing the breathing, like breathe it in to like expand the love, breathe it out to send it out. Um, I have, I channeled that meditation. I'm not sure even what the meditation was. It was powerful. And the women who were touched by that meditation yesterday, who shared, um, I have been working and I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to get emotional. Uh, Heather will tell you, Heather Ben Johns and I've been talking about this. A lot of you have been here. Sheila's heard this. Nancy's probably heard this. I am developing um, a class or retreats that I would be willing to come teach at your retreats, right? Called Woo Woo 420. And the membership for my mystical life is going to be getting kind of a sneak pre preview into this on Tuesday night, right? The fourth Tuesday, which is this Tuesday night. So if you're not in the membership, please join that before Tuesday night. We will be doing a Woo Woo 420, my very first one. Um, and we're going to do that the fourth Tuesday. I'm going to speak to the membership about all things cannabis related. And I've been reading this book and it has been called Wake, Bake and Meditate. And it is about reaching, uh, taking your spiritual practice to a higher level with cannabis and reaching a peak experience through cannabis. And um, I've been working on set and setting and meditations and all of these things. And yesterday, yesterday, God, source, spirit, divine, whatever you want to call it. My peak experience was probably during the blazing gaze meditation. I have never, I, I felt that I was channeling before and I was getting little things before. I've never channeled until yesterday, I don't think. Like truly channeled till yesterday. And being able to sit there and free my mind, right? I did use cannabis. I just, I smoked a lot. A lot of had some edibles. I had like, you know, it's a, a piece of s'mores cookie and a carrot cake bite. And um, I was expecting my peak experience, right, to be a meditation and to, like, have an astral travel or to, you know, like, have some clarity for my life, um, to see, like, my spirit guide, something very much specifically and utterly for me. Does that make sense? Like when I heard peak experience and raising your spiritual, like, you know, um, you know, raising, getting higher, you're getting, getting closer to on your spiritual path using cannabis. It was very much about, and, and what I, way I approach this, right. The way I've been approaching this whole thing has been about, um, has been about what I was going to get out of it. Like for me, like how I was going to feel the things I was going to see, blah, blah, blah. When I did that message yesterday um, and I and I felt the connection when I was doing that yesterday. If you've ever done an in-person group meditation and you shared energy space with these women, with other women, with other people. You can understand what I'm saying. I could feel. I felt very, 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 very connected to source. Like, whoo, like that was the peak experience I was looking at. And the message that I got was, and um, it's interesting because if you're watching this from the retreat page, I don't remember your name. And I'm very sad that I don't remember your name. <laughs> But you came to the Blazing Glaze med Gaze Meditation yesterday. And we stayed, you stayed behind and we chatted. And you are a warrior. And you know who I'm talking about when I say you are a warrior. And she um, said to me, she said to me, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> it's, 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 I did not want to do this this morning. I've been emotional all weekend. She um, said to me, um, she's, you know, who Tennessee volunteers are right. 
And um, I want to find the actual, like, I can't remember exactly what it's, it's about the, their motto, right? Tennessee uh, football. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to read it because I'm, I'm going to pull it up real quick because it's about the heart of a volunteer. Tennessee Vols motto. Sorry, y'all. My, I have not been on the computer for a second. Something about the heart of a volunteer. Um, football. Um, trying to find the exact wording she used. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trying to find this. I'm trying to find what she's, um, I'm trying to find the words, but it's very, very, very important that she gave me yesterday. And I know that I'm being a pain in the ass, but that's just one of those things for me. Um, I'm going to find it. And I, it was something about, um, You can't break a volunteer because we're volunteering. Basically, it's 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 interesting what she said, and it, it took it away. And I'm very sad that I don't. Um, okay. Maybe this is it. The heart of a volunteer quote. Let's see what it is. Nope. Here it is. Nothing is as strong as the heart of a volunteer. There's nothing stronger than the heart of a volunteer. And she's like, you're volunteering to do this. There's nothing stronger than the heart of a volunteer. And something about that just, oh, my gosh. Hello? It must be Melanie from Cartersville. I'm guessing that's Melanie from Cartersville. Is that Melanie? Am I right, right wrong? And um, I was like, oh. And she said um, the message that I got when she was we were talking was about um, – Oh, it's Nikki, someone else. My family are huge Vols fan. You know your truth, and the truth will set you free. The heart of all is never ending. Yeah. And um, she was basically telling me that, you know, and it was about the fact that um, I didn't know where the message was coming from. I didn't even know. So we, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I'm going to share it with you all today. So the, the card that we pulled for that meditation yesterday was the moonstone and it was live in purpose. And the message I got was each of us have a unique calling time to look deeper, to find meaning within yourself and ensure the actions you take and the choices you make are intentional and purposeful. Follow your heart and conscience, just like the moon waxes and wanes. So will you feeling closer to, and then further away from your purpose. It's not Melanie. It's Nikki. I saw that. Hi, Nikki. Uh, I need to meet you. And I think you're Sheila's friend. Is that right? Is that the Nikki that's Sheila's friend? I'm just trying to put it together. Um, trusting you are walking the path towards your higher purpose. Should you know um, when you know that you're doing that, that should fulfill you every day. And then knowing that you are doing your heart's purpose. Right. And when I got this card and I did this message yesterday, and I read this to everybody else and they were like, holy moly. Uh, that's what this is about. And I was like, and I talked about journaling and I had a message that came in about journaling that was talking about if you're not journaling, it is like putting together a 10,000 piece puzzle in the box, right? Trying to put all of those pieces and parts together without taking it out of the box and spreading it out. I'm coming this week because that cookie was awesome. Yay. Um, and things you put out of your mind onto paper can also be more tangible. Um, and so I was giving them the writing prompts for the moonstones and how it's important to journal. And they were like, holy crap. And I was like, I don't know how this message kind of. And then we I also pulled one of the oracle cards from the, the Avalon deck and we got disruption. And the message I got for that, for this group, was that uh, shakeups are necessary uh, when you need a wake up call. Sometimes we need to have a wake up call. And it's interesting because my disruption in my day yesterday, right, or Saturday, yeah, yesterday, my disruption in my day is the wake up call I needed to be able to sit and do exactly what I said I was going to do. 
which I was going to sit, get closer with nature, commune with source, and get some clarity. And had I gone along with the itinerary because all the things looked fun, I would have filled up my day with fodder and not spent the day in nature communing with God. And I was able to do that. So that disruption, even though it hurt, I hurt. I have like, it was like a, it's still like a constant toothache throb in this arm. But had that not happened, right, um, I would not have been able to um, get the, uh, I'm from Tennessee, big time Vols fan. I love that. So, yeah. But the, the woman said to me was, um, nothing as strong as the heart of a volunteer. Which is your heart. And they were, everybody's like, I could just see your heart. And I'm like, interesting. I wasn't interacting much. I was sitting at my camp. I looked, I felt like I looked standoffish, but I was protecting their energy from mine and my energy from theirs. I needed clarity. And what helped me was, is that I'm very intuitive and I can listen. And, I, and if I was around these people, they would have felt like maybe like some of these messages that they needed to hear that they were floored by um, would have come from you know, hearing the conversations. And I think I told, she probably ever heard me say that I was not around these women. So when we were talking and I had messages come in for them specifically for them, they were like, and I was like, cause you know, I, that helps me to have the confirmation that I need because the, I was like, they didn't, these messages made no sense to me. And the other message that I got was about that. And I'm going to keep that. That's a message for me. It's nobody's business, but I got a lot of clarity on that today. You were there because you want it. You want it. The heart of volunteers, pure and strong. Yes. Um, because I choose to be right. That's what she said. You choose to be. She's like, you know, you're volunteering this. You don't have to do this. And your heart is strong. And I was like, thank you. I feel that it's strong, but sometimes um, it hurts, right? It can break too. Um, so it says shakeups are necessary when the need, when you need a wake up call, I needed to wake up call this weekend, right? Be diligent and alert when making decisions. And that's what's interesting. I was like, you know, I was very diligent in the decision making. I'm like, I'm going to look like an asshole. I, I mean, I, I don't have my hat. Y'all see my big hat that I had on. I roll up in there looking like I'm like coming off of like a cruise with all my bags. Like I, it's ridiculous. I had this weird thing like these ladies are going to think like this woman is a pain in the ass. And I had to be diligent and careful when making my decisions on how to act yesterday. I really did love you. Good night. Bye, Nancy. Um, we are having a crappy old weather day, but it's okay. Um, I But I had wardrobe changes. Like I was like, you know, like I had, I, it was just ridiculous. But I made the decision to like not let it stress me out. I was there for a reason. They were there for a reason. I wasn't going to yuck anybody's yum and did it, right? That's how we worked. So it says chaos is the ultimate cleanser. Sometimes the most beautiful days come after the most miserable nights. Can y'all agree with that? Can I get some thumbs up, some hearts, some O faces, right? A lot of times the most amazing things in our life um, are the, it's kind of like when you have like, I don't know what the image, the image that's coming into me is kind of like, like a forest fire, like a real, like hot and ferocious fire in a forest. And it clear cuts the land and it takes all of the things out and it's hot and it's, it's embers and all of the thing. But after that big fire, then you have all that new birth and that regrowth. And it's like the floors cleaned up and everything's ready. It's like wipes the slate clean for like a new start. So the disruption card, when I pulled it, it felt very like, ew, like shake things up. This is the time to know that shit's not going to happen like you want it to happen. Be prepared for it. But it was also getting you to understand, right? That sometimes chaos is the ultimate cleanser. Sometimes we need somebody to come in and just fuck stuff up so that we can get shit right. And I hate to use bad language as early in the morning, but that's what it calls for. And it says it's time to rethink, rebuild, and refortify that which was unstable. Because a lot of times we will get stuck in the unstable. We will get stuck in the um, chaos because it's what we're comfortable in. And when you have something like disruption that comes in and just wipes the slate clean, it does you a favor. And that's what I had to remember yesterday, right? I had to remember that, yeah, um, I, number one, needed to know my limits and understand them. And like, I'm, 
I am the crone energy. There was a lot of maidens and mothers there. A lot of maidens and mothers there. Uh, I was top three oldest people uh, of the campers, top three to five. There were some older ladies that came out that were amazing that came and hung with us. But the, um, you know, but the, I'm let my girl know to please share and group and retreat group. Um, so uh, that that card was as much for me yesterday to remind myself that um, I needed that disruption. I needed that chaos to to t it gives me time. It gave me time to rethink, rebuild, and refortify. Had I not gotten hurt yesterday, that the, I needed that to be able to connect the way that I did yesterday. I legit put on amazing music at the campsites, popped up my ten by ten. We rolled four or five different things and we legit, um, um, we legit just sat there and laughed and I did my meditations and I put on some surrender and flow playlist as well, set up my crystals, um, pulled out my decks, got clarity out of chaos. That's exactly what I did. Clarity out of chaos. Um, and then it says, in life, all people, places, concepts, and things are but fleeting on the path to wholeness, right? Uh, things come, things go. But on the path to wholeness, um, we have to realize that people are going to come. Houses, places, concepts, things, right? All of those things are going to wax and wane like the moon. Um, and only spirit. Only God is stable and eternal. And I thought that was an interesting um, pull for that message, that, that, um, for that um, meditation. Um, people were, um, the message that came in, the message that I was able to channel in and deliver um, made people connect, made people stop and think. They, there were lots of tears. Uh, the affirmations, whenever we, I said them to please, you know how I tell y'all to affirm our message every week, you do it in the comments. There's something about hearing 12 women affirming out loud together that is powerful and chill bumps. I was working with one lady and I felt like her story was very similar to mine about, she's like, I don't want to cry in front of people. I felt like it's weakness. And I, I talked to her about that and about making room, right? And like, you feel like you have to do more. And the message that came in for her, she's like, I feel like I have to do more, do more, do more, do more to be more. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't mean to be weird. And I was like, but I don't know who this message is for when I got it. I said, but when you said that, I, I knew I wrote it in different color. So the stuff that I wrote in black was a message I was told to have reds and greens. These are reds and greens. This is black. And um, I was told like stuff that I wrote in black were messages for other people. So whenever I wrote th these things in the black pen, um, that was what source was told me. And I have all the pens and it says, here's what you need to do for recall journaling. You're not going to know when you're not going to know why, but um, you're going to. Um, so green was just some things that I like looked up and got like my thought process. I felt like it was very much me writing. Red was um, messages that were for me and for others. Um, and then black was for other people. Um, so I was like, uh, I don't mean to be weird because, you know, I had been an honest woman. And I was like, her name was Shauna. And I was like, um, but I have a message for you. And she's like, you know, I was like, she believes. I mean, you know, I was like, so I didn't know who this was for until you just said that. And I literally, the message, she's like, I have to do more to be more. And I was like, um, the message that I got in and literally y'all, I wrote this. This is the journaling. This is when I started doing this stuff for the meditation. Welcome to cannabis, a switch tool, which person's unique, like my little talking points. And it says, you don't have to do more to be more. I mean, her words were like, I have to do more to be more. And I'm like, oh, I need to go to my journal. So this message is for you. And she's like, okay. And I was like, what I got was, do less of what makes you miserable to be more of what makes you matter. And she lost it. Right. And I was like, I don't know. I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so unconnected to the message. And that's what source says, right? If you care about whether or not the message you're giving is resonating, 
I care. I want it to be for the right person. But whenever I am worried about like what I'm saying, like, is this the right thing to say? Should I say this? And that's what Source said to me yesterday. When you're questioning whether or not you should say it, when you are having those moments of like, mm, this is something I should say. Source said, that's not me. That's your ego. Don't say it. When I give you a message, you'll have no fear in delivering it. You'll be un, unconnected to it. You'll be unbothered by it, right? You will be, it'll be that impersonal love. When your ego is not attached to it, like you did something wrong, if you're delivering a message from source, don't hit the messenger. I don't know. I don't know what this means. I didn't know what this meant. When I got this message, I had no idea what it meant. I didn't know who to say it to, when to say it, why to say it. When she sat there at that meditation yesterday, she's like, I just like I have to do more, do more, do more to be more. You know, I got to be more, do more. I can't be cry. I can't be weak. I can't do this. I said, I don't mean to be rude. I need to tell you something. And I explained to her, I was like, I got this message and it was for, and I read it to her. She's like, oh. I said, I need, we need to talk. We need to, we, but she knew, but she knew. And I didn't need to know. And that is being the passenger. That is trusting. That is what I wanted to do this weekend. That is how I reached my peak experience using cannabis this weekend. It was not a peak experience that I got this big answer. It was that I got to connect to this woman. I got to connect. I'm going to tell you another story about another way it happened. And I've got the, I don't have the iPad to show you, but you can go. If you have the, if you have the hometown hippie playlist one, on your Spotify, I want you, if you don't believe me after this live, if you don't believe me after this live, I want you to go to that playlist and I want you to look at the very last song that is on that playlist. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but I'm going to tell you in a second. Uh, one more thing about this. So as um, everybody left yesterday, there was another Reiki healer who was there that stayed at the tent. She's like, hey, um, are you okay? I really need a big giant hug for you. Your energy is amazing. I feel so connected. I agree with everything you're saying. I feel like you're such an addition to our group. Um, she was beautiful. And she's like, can, can we hug? I need a real hug. And we hugged for like three minutes. And like just like one of those like, oh, my gosh, and the energy. I just don't want to let go. It just felt good, right? It was like hands on Reiki on. It's like two Reiki healers. Are like It was amazing. And she was like, all the colors. Oh, my gosh. And it was what I needed. It was what we needed, right? Um, what I needed for those moments. Um, whenever everyone left, I sat there for a moment, right? And took a deep breath in. It took a deep breath out. And then through the woods, this little bunny rabbit just hopped out. Just as beautiful as it could be. A little fuzziest little wild jackrabbit bunny hopped around playing around. And I looked up, there's a hawk flying around like that bunny and that hawk. I don't know. And we go up to our um, to this next part of the day, right? We go up to the next part, which is the 420. So I go from Blazing Gaze, and I see this little bunny, and I'm, like, finishing that up. And then I have my Plants Over Pills discussion at 420 up at the She Shed. And we had moved the meditation to my RV because I was really not feeling well. I'm like, I cannot get to all the places. I'm just going to stay here. Anybody who wants to come can come here. She's like, can you come up to the She Shed? For the 420, I was like, I'm, yeah, I can come up there. All that good energy. I was feeling a little bit better. So I walked up for that. And what they do at 420 every day on the farm, or if it's a working weekend, they invite everybody to their, to their barn at 420. And they do favorite part of your day. It's kind of like a gratitude, right? So you go from youngest to oldest, and you go in a circle, and you tell about your favorite part of the day. So we did the favorite part of the weekend. Because people were all coming, coming in. Favorite part of the weekend. And if somebody says your part, you can't, um, you have to think of another favorite part, right? And the second person that went, different woman, said that their favorite part of the day had been um, the meditation they just left with me. And when I tell y'all that melted me, I mean, my heart melted. And I was like, you know, it's interesting because I went around the circle. I said, well, my favorite part of the day was after that meditation. And I was sitting there and it was like the nature was like sitting there watching us. And as soon as everybody walked away, it just kind of bounced out of the woods. It was just like frolicking. I said, there's this beautiful little bunny rabbit that hopped out of the woods and hopped around. And the lady that gave that saying how the favorite part was the meditation, she starts crying. And she's like, oh, I was like, what? She's like, 
That's my spirit animal. That's her totem animal is that rabbit. And um, so today she's like, I have your information. She's going to be joining to become part of the grateful fed. And I let them know. I'm like, as moms, I talked about the power of one. I did all that stuff. But those things just amaze me. So one more thing, then we're going to do our card about how you just never know, right? You never know how your blessings are going to find you. And you should not carry around expectations, right? And what, um, and I want to say Selena's on here. Selena joined me this weekend, right? Um, Selena joined me. Um, I think that it was a beautiful weekend. She, uh, Selena, if you have any thoughts, let me know. Uh, it was funny because she took a nap and slept through the blazing gaze yesterday. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was like, do not apologize. Do not apologize. Um, everyone was exactly where they were supposed to be at every moment all the time. So another person we have added to our group, right? Uh, her name is Jenna. Um, she was my neighbor and she was li living in the RV next to me. And when I get there, we get there on Friday evening. Jenna is already there and she's set up and um, I'm not going to give her any last names or any of that stuff. Um, and she is hanging out by her little RV and I'm like, how you doing? She's like, good. How are you? And I was like, here for the retreat. She's like, well, um, she did not sign up for the retreat. Um, she had, um, signed up, had found it online had searched out something fun to do. Uh, just to go like Airbnb and kind of thing. Cause it's a working Airbnb. You can go anytime. You can rent a yurt. You can rent an RV. Uh, you can do a camping site, whatever you want to rent. There's all kinds of like things there. It's a working cannabis farm and, um, there's activities and things you can do. Um, she rented the RV just to get away by herself for her birthday. And, uh, Jen and I became fast friends. She was super fun. Younger, younger woman, single, no kids kind of thing. Um, out there just kind of smoking blunts and listening to music, right? Just kind of chilling for her birthday weekend, kind of making that connection to herself. Um, we got back last night. We went up to dinner last night. We kind of hung out tight. She was amazing. Yesterday she sat with me out at the camp all day long and we just, she rolled blunts and I'd smoke them, right? It was, and she smoked too, but I mean, I didn't have to roll a blunt or anything. She's really good at rolling blunts. I have not rolled one in a while. And I was really bad at it. Um, but you know, we ate dinner, so we all hung out. It was a great time. We laughed. I was like, you know, so if you want to go do activities and all the things, I was like, please, 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 if you feel like, because I have to sit here because I don't feel good, that you are sitting here because I'm sitting here. If you're trying to entertain me, I do not want anybody to interrupt their good time because of what I'm doing. This is, this is what I was going to do this weekend. I needed to unplug, right? She's like, no, I feel safe with you. I did not know it was going to be a retreat. Um, it is, this is new to her. She's not from a legal state. She's from North Carolina. So this is different for her. So she hung out and we had the best conversations and you never know what somebody's going through. Right. And, um, fast forward to late night conversations. I'm not giving any other information. The name and her, the Facebook group is not even in here. I heard the name that she goes by on Facebook is not even in here. Uh, but I know her by what her name is. There's no kind of giving away anything. She shared with me that, um, she lost her older brother a few years ago, unexpectedly to a chronic illness, nothing kind of, but, um, big brother, little brother. He was the man in her life that was consistent and that was her person. Right. And this was the first birthday that she was going to be older than her brother when he passed away. So she escaped away to Virginia, to a cannabis farm to kind of just sit there and look at the stars and, um, and ha was having her own journey, her own journey. And um, we were at the little the, the little dinner with the dance party, the pool party last night. We stayed for about till about nine thirty or so. Started at nine. I think we left there by like nine thirty. It's literally like walking from you know the house to the camper um, from the pool party. Also, I hurt my arm. If y'all can see that, I got bruises and cuts. Um, and she said, she shared her, she hadn't told me anything about this until last night. And uh, I said, I hope you had a good birthday. She said, I had, my brother used to do stuff like this. Cause I really like, she got up in the room like, happy birthday. And I had rolled one and like gave her the carrot cake for her birthday. You know me, I'm trying to be nice. Cause I love people and I wanted to make her birthday amazing. And she shared with me that information. And she said, you know, it really hit me. I knew he was with us, 
because they were at the dance party, they had this song playing. And I knew that he, I was like, all right, but bro, I see you. Like, I hear you. The song that was played at his funeral was played at the dance party. And it was Kansas. Carry on my wayward song. There'll be peace when you are done. Um, I love that song, but I had not thought about it in a million years. Red and I were going somewhere to a doctor Friday. And um, we were listening to the radio and something, something. And that song came into my mind on Friday, going to Richmond. As I was cleaning up and getting everything ready to go for the weekend to get packed up when we got home, um, I that song came into my mind. And I added it to the Hometown Hippie playlist. I want y'all to go to the, if you're on Spotify, and I'm not making this up. And I said, I did not know why. I had not thought of that song in forever. It wasn't even played on the radio. But something was said, and it came to, I heard it. I could hear it as clear as day. Carry on my wayward son. Right? There'll be peace when you are done. And um, I added that to our playlist. I added that song to our playlist and that was the song that she knew her brother was with her, that he was watching over her, that he shared this birthday with her. And I said, well, she's like, and we were supposed to be friends. You were supposed to be in the RV next to me. And this is how I had, she had the, she, she told me last night and <laughs> she told me last night, she said, this is the best birthday I think I have ever had. Thank you. And um, whether I got to poop all weekend or not, maybe to come home and poop, whether I got a shower or not, whether or not I got whiskers, whether or not my arm feels like it's falling off, um, nothing is stronger than the heart of a volunteer. Nothing is stronger than the heart of a volunteer. And I said, Every day, you cannot go out and change the world. One person can't do it. But every day, you can go out and change the world for one person. And this weekend, I thought my expectation was that I needed to work on Tammy. That Tammy needed all of this kindness and this, this stuff, right? Um, but I needed to change the world for other people. I needed to help other people um, because that fills my cup up. I'm like, that's what fills up my cup. That truly fills up my cup. And I didn't get any sleep. Like I didn't go there and sleep. Like I, my, okay, let me explain to y'all. I'm going to use this card. Here's my camper. Here's my camper. Here was the chicken coop. Like the, the chain link for the chicken coop was like against my thing. So starting at four o'clock in the morning, it was like kruk, 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 kruk. <laughs> the rooster. <laughs> like, I hear you cock a doodle doing. And it would start and then it was like kruk, 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 kruk. and I would go back to sleep and like the snooze button. I was like, oh, you little wonders. I was like, this is when I was like, I should have, instead of getting Little Caesars to have like uh, something to eat out there, I should have stopped and got some KFC and been like, keep chirping, big bird. I hear ya. <laughs> I should have walked out there the damn chicken leg. <laughs> um, and I wasn't sleeping beside my, my better half, right? I wasn't in my bed. I hadn't had a, like a good shower. I had no hot water. Um, so it wasn't like I went out there and like recharge my batteries. <laughs> like I didn't go out there and like get this like spa vacation that, you know, expectation. Like Tammy's like, okay, I'm going to go like camp and like, you know, take all my things. And no, I'm tired. Um, I still got my wristband on, you know, I'm, I'm still like camp stinky. Um, but it was what it needed to be. And it was letting you know, letting all of you know, right, that sometimes um, 
fantasy and reality are far between, are way far from each other. But allowing it to happen, right? Allowing, okay, okay, okay. These all flipped over. I don't know. These, these, no, these all flipped over. They are not all cards. Um, sometimes um, the unexpected, the unplanned, the unintended is exactly what you needed. And what I said was, is I was going this weekend and Carly said, let it be what it is going to be. Whatever it's going to be, let it be what it is. Like whatever happens, happens. Worse, I was like, I'm 30 minutes from home. If shit doesn't go right, I just get in my car and I come the hell home. If I'm not comfortable, I, if I would have known it was raining, if I would have known, right, that it was going to be nasty and I was going to be doing Sunday summer from here, I probably would have come home last night right after my meditation. I would have missed... Um, the gratitude for the day. I would have missed those messages. I would have missed Jenna telling me her story. Uh, and that was so important to me, that connection, because um, she's going to be, she's like, I'm coming to help you with the store, whatever y'all need. I did have a card jump out. I don't know what this is. It's upside down. Let's see what we got. I didn't ask for the clear and perfect message yet, but this might be a card. I don't know. But what we're going to do today is we're going to pull our crystal affirmation card for this group for the week. We're going to ask, I'm going to ask to be, a, I'm going to do this. I'm like putting my ears on, right? I'm going to ask to be a clear and perfect channel for the message to the highest and best of this group. I'm going to ask that you all do it with me. Take some deep breaths in. Exhale. Smell the birthday cake. Blow out the candles. Inhale the good shit. <sighs> Exhale the bullshit. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, cards. They keep jumping out at me. Uh, we got two that jumped out. Unikite and Sol Sodalite. Sodalite jumps out a lot of us. And Unikite is the first one. It says live in the now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Not sure who that is, but good morning. Um, Unikite. Live in the now. And I love the color of the stone. I love the color of this stone. I think it's a beautiful stone. Let's see what Unikite has to say for us. It's actually the very last stone in our book. There's no time like the present. The past is done and the future hasn't happened yet. So ground yourself in the here and now. With our busy lives and busy minds, this can be hard to do. But being mindful and in the moment allows you to make the most out of every aspect of your life. Allow yourself the opportunity to really connect with those around you and fully invest yourself in everything that you do. Try to avoid distractions or letting your mind wander, especially about matters you have no control over. Immerse yourself in each experience. Put your heart and soul into every action and bring a sense of gratitude to where you are in life. Here and now is where you will find the most contentment and true contentment. Um, core questions for our journaling this week with this card is, where's your mind right now? Wishing you could change the past, worrying about the future, or being in the present. What are you most grateful for right now? That's an amazing journal prompt. I'm going to encourage each of you to do that. Talking about where's your it's easy, easy, right? Where's your mind right now? Just start talking, just start writing about where your mind is. And then boom, what are you most grateful for right now? And then crystal affirmation, crystal affirmation for the week. I live in the now. I'll write down three things that you are grateful for in the present, in this present moment. I love that. Now let's do the soda light, which is speak your truth. Let's put these two messages together. I'm tired. It'll be a good nap today. I can promise you that. Um, speak your truth. You have something to say. You have a powerful voice. Speak up. Allow your words to flow from your heart, ensuring that your communication is authentic. Um, is authentic to how uh, you feel. So making sure that how you communicate is authentic to how you feel. And, you know, that's interesting. Like, I really feel like this speak your truth, this total light is a lot, is very much speaking to me. Um, because um, 
sometimes we try to edit ourselves um, because our ego tells us to. I am so tired. I'm so sorry. Um, although it can be much easier to let certain things go unsaid, it's important to have those difficult, even sometimes awkward conversations to express yourself and ask for what you really need. Articulating your thoughts and feelings to others allows them to understand and honor your truth. Through your clear, confident communication, others can hear what your heart is really saying. This is interesting because the message I'm getting from this is that so many of us are afraid to speak our truth or to speak our heart because we are trying to protect others' hearts. And... we get caught up in delivery of the message that we don't even really know what the message is. So whatever, if someone's hearing this today and is like, I need to do that. Somebody, this, this card is speaking to someone or some people. And the message I have is that um, don't communicate with anything until you are clear about what it is your heart truly wants. Um, when you operate from the space of the heart, the the message is easy um, when you're not operating from a place of the heart. When you're operating from a place of ego um, that's disguised as heart, that's when you have trouble communicating. I don't know who that's for, but that's the message. And I'm okay with that, whoever it's for. See? Impersonal, unattached, unbothered. That's the source message, not a tiny message. Um. Um, that's interesting, Heather, because what I was getting from that is that a lot, a lot more about um, that what hurts is when people don't really speak their heart. Sometimes we work out of a place of ego and anger versus being able to speak of a place of the heart, if that makes sense, right? What That's the message I'm getting. That could be a different message. The message that I'm getting is that when you really, when you're clear in your heart about what you want. Those messages are easy to articulate because it's coming from the heart space. The message that I'm getting is about the fact that when you're speaking where you think it's from the heart and it's hurting, it's because it's coming from the ego, not the heart. It's like you don't know what the heart wants. You just know that it doesn't like this. And that's an ego thing. But when you want to articulate those hard conversations, when you come from a, when you come from clarity of what it is that your heart desires and is needed, when when you can't get when you what you want and what you need are the same thing, your heart agrees. That message is super easy, and that's the message I had for somebody specifically. Just just FYI. Yes, if you had your truth to save others, it can do more damage. Yes, and the big thing is about knowing what your truth is. Really getting to the to the bottom of what it is your truth is. Core questions, core questions, right? When do you need to speak up for yourself? When do you need to speak up for yourself? Where in your life, right? Where are the times that you're struggling that you need to speak up for yourself? Where are those moments where you feel like you're not speaking what your heart desires because of fear or whatever other reason it may be? Where are you not being honest with yourself and others, right? Where are the things that you're letting, like this is for me, right? Where I let it, let, let it go and let it flow. Like get along, go along to get along. It's not that big of a deal. I don't really care. I'll choose my battles, right? Well, maybe if you speak up about those things before it comes a battle, right, you don't get taken advantage of. And if you get clear about those things, then you be it becomes uh, clearer and less of a trigger at, la at a later time. Um, how would it feel to speak your truth? And that's an interesting question because a lot of people might say right now, and I want you to journal this, right? I want you to journal, like, how does it feel? Like, what is the feeling you get about speaking your truth? And then I want you to let that sit. And when you've done that, when you've gone through and actually spoken your truth, I would love to see you come back and leave some pages open there to come back and journal what happened when you spoke your truth to see those comparisons. And sometimes I do that. Sometimes like if I'm working through a problem that I know I'm just starting to journal the issues on, like things that are bothering me or triggers or things like that, I'll journal it out. And then what I'm finding is I leave some pages because then I can mark it down and it helps me to not go far, so far off the spiral the next time. If I can say, okay, when was the last time I had this kind of thing happen? Let me go into my problem journal. And I'm like, okay, so I didn't want to talk to this person about this because I thought they'd be mad and they might get pissy and blah, blah, blah. And I talk about like worst case scenario, best case scenarios, right? 
is your truth really yours or is it what someone else wants? And that's what I'm getting at, right? You have to worry about what's clear for you and then don't, how it affects you and you alone. The, the subtle light is about you and you alone. Um, but then I left room and then I can go back and I can see that like, hey, my concerns and this problem were way bigger than the outcome. And it gives me some perspective when I'm dealing with big things. That's why journaling is so important. It gives you confidence. It's like a, it's like a handbook for life, right? For your handbook, for your life. Nobody else can write that handbook but you. And journals are a way for you to do that. Um, and you can see, like, then you can say, oh, well, this time I was worked up. And, like, Mark, I, how long it was by the time you journaled that to the time you spoke about it. Because I've done that, too. Like, I've kept those notes just to help myself out to grow. But that's, each person does their own thing. And if that sounds crazy to you, don't do it. It's all good. No big deal. It's just some it, just some tips and tricks. Um, crystal affirmation on the sodalite. I love this one. I love this one. I communicate clearly and others listen to my truth. Today, speak from your heart instead of from your head. And those are our two crystal cards. Live in the here and now and speak your truth, right? And speak your truth, right? Today. Red says this to me all the time. Stop ruining today's peace, worrying about tomorrow's problems. Stop ruining today's peace, worrying about tomorrow's problems. Stop looking in the rear of your mirror. You're not going that way. Look at today. Look at the now. Live in the now, right? Look at what's in front of you and handle it just for today, right? Just for today. And this is a great one for those of you who are struggling with being able to get the energy. Maybe you're dealing with something big. Um, this is a way that you're like, okay, the world is really big. I can't make a three-year plan. I can't make a five-year plan. But you can make a daily plan. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to live in the now. I'm going to do exactly in the moment what I need to do. And then I'm going to operate from a place of living and speaking my truth. And just for today, just for today, give it a try, right? Just for today, give it a try. Day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. It is never too late to start fresh. And it is never too late to speak your truth. Um, this weekend was um, this this weekend was an experience. Um, it was not um, at all the anticipated experience that I that I thought I was going to have. Um, there were pieces that were way more beautiful, and there were pieces that were eh, you know whatever. It's what it was, you know. It's what it was. Um, but all in all. Um, and, and like everything in the world, right? It was exactly, exactly, I was exactly where, I was exactly when, I was exactly how, I was exactly, 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 exactly where I was supposed to be. Uh, if you were a woman or someone that Alfredo, the, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that dinner last night was bomb. That dinner last night was delicious. They did a whole infused, you had options for infused or not. Uh, they had an infused pasta dinner last night with um, garlic bread, uh, sauces that were infused, pot. We had Alfredo, red sauce, chicken, salad. It was delicious. It was good. Um, but that Alfredo was good. I, I got undosed. You know, I'm funny about my edibles. <laughs> I'm funny about my edibles. Um, I did get a couple of things. I'm going to show you all real quick. I got some pretty pretty stuff. I'm really excited about Um there was a lady there and, you know, Red and I talked about putting art into the store and she is actually, it's Jess Lundy um, art, custom paintings, original art, jewelry, art prints, mural paintings, face paintings, live paintings, signs and menus, consignment, wholesale license, art displays. She puts together art displays. These are all hand done by her. Beautiful um, flower. She gave me that for free. Um, she also made the tapestry. Um, I got, it's got Metatron's cube. It's, um, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? It's going to be my new altar tapestry cloth. I think it was beautiful. I'm going to hang it up. Uh, I got that. Um, and then, uh, I, uh, got a piece of jewelry for me that I'm super excited about. I spent a little bit of money on this. 
but uh, you can open it up and you can put different stuff in it. This is a sterling silver casted uh, four leaf clover. Um, it's a beautiful little locket. You can actually open it up and put different things inside the plastic. It's a magnifying glass cast in sterling silver with a four leaf clover, beautiful clasp. I'm gonna wear this around my neck. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna show you these earrings. And these are jade, turquoise, I'm sorry, turquoise. Turquoise earrings. I thought they were gorgeous. Little sea turtles with feathers. Little sea turtles with feathers. Um, the intention behind these, um, these are a gift. And um, I'm going to tell you who I've gifted them to. Um, so uh, my ex-daughter-in-law uh, is my grandson's mother, right? My grandson's mother. Uh, loves turtles, loves, 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 loves turtles. And um, I immediately thought of Kayla when I saw those earrings. And I don't really have a relationship with Kayla like that. But um, I also know that, you know, as a mom, sometimes we do all the shopping for gifts and things like that. And sometimes when dad takes kids shopping, uh, they end up getting like, you know, something a little silly maybe some bath and body works, but it's not one of those, you know, thoughtful, thoughtful, thoughtful. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times kids don't, you know, they want to buy a toy, they're getting mom, whatever. And so I try to, when I see things, uh, Joshua's got such a big giant heart. He loves to gift thoughtful things. And if I'll say, Hey, I found these for your mom. And I thought you might want to give them to her for Christmas as a nice gift. Um, and I may give them to her before then. I don't know. But uh, I don't know why. I thought of Kayla. And whether we have a relationship or not, I'm going to make sure she gets these because they were meant for her, apparently. And that's the intentionality behind those earrings. I love them. Don't get me wrong. I would wear the shit out of them. But they were bought as a gift for her. I got myself this little necklace. And I don't know why. I don't know why I needed to give her that. But I did. And um, I'm going to. You know, I don't know if I should give them to her or should share to let Joshua give them to her. I will see what the source says. I don't care that she knows that I got them at all. I just want to make sure she gets them and that she appreciates them. You know, that she she like likes them. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, that is Sunday sermon, y'all. I have not had a shower. I'm going to go get a shower. I'm going to put on some comfortable clothes. I'm going to do some laundry. Um, I'm going to relax a little bit. I've not looked at orders. Uh, I know that there's one person who ordered two of the stuffed cookies last week and I just did it through cash app. And apparently we just dropped the ball and did not, um, send those out. So we owe, uh, two stuffed cookies and then whatever orders came in since Friday, I am not working today, period. That's all that's on period. I'm not working today. I'm going to go and enjoy my husband. We're going to have steak dinner tonight, get through this rain, take a nap in my bed. I'm sure I'm going to. Um, I love y'all. Oh, let me show you my tennis shoes, though. I did buy new tennis shoes. We went to the eye doctor. I think they're super cute. They have a little, uh, what made me buy them was this flower, honestly. This is what made me buy these shoes, which was the tongue. It has this little flower right there. And I don't know why. It's the color. The, the green, and I, I love these little Nikes. And I bought them because of that flower. So, as always, I love each and every one of you. Don't forget, uh, as one person, you cannot change the world. But every single day, you have the ability to go out and change the world for one person. Uh, the power of one, we grow our numbers every day by you touching one person. And the next day we touch a person and they touch a person and share the message. And we're coming into the end of our August, our summer of love. There's going to be our summer of love contest giveaways going on. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on. Don't forget every order placed between um, June 1st of our reopening and August 31st. Get you entered to win some fun stuff as well as um, get your city and state on our Summer of Love t-shirt we have coming out in the fall. Uh, they'll be available in our store, I hope. Um, more to come on all of that soon. But as always, y'all, peace, love, and feast.
Stay elevated, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day, and I love you so much.